What is Plutus Tau? In this video, we will be covering everything you need to know about the biggest governance aggregator on Arbitrum. We'll cover a few of their products, their tokenomics, their productive treasury and native governance token, and ultimately their goal as a platform. We'll also cover a few of the dApps they work with to offer users high yield bearing products, as well as governance. Without further ado, let's get into Plutus DAO. So what is Plutus DAO fundamentally, and what are governance aggregators? According to their docs, Plutus DAO is a platform that aims to maximize liquidity and rewards for users using their platform. By combining multiple yield-bearing assets from across the Arbitrum network into their products, Plutus creates added liquidity for all of those products while also giving their users the most yield possible. While doing this, Plutus DAO also serves as a governance aggregator for major platforms on the Arbitrum network. Some of these major platforms include GMX, DopeX, Jones DAO, and SpareX. By locking up the native tokens of these protocols into the Plutus DAO platform, the Plutus DAO platform will automatically convert these tokens into their respective vote escrow versions. Vote escrow tokens are governance tokens that also provide yield to users for locking up their tokens for specified amounts of time. Users will receive back Plutus assets or PLS assets, which are their governance and liquidity aggregation products. From there, users can stake their Plutus assets on the Plutus DAO platform and receive bonus liquidity from the Plutus DAO treasury. The benefits of having PLS assets compared to just holding normal vote escrow governance tokens are that you can benefit from increased yield as well as mobility of funds. As of now, the only Arbitrum tokens you can stake on the Plutus Cell platform are Jones, Sparax, and Dopex. The other part of their tokenomics is their PLV assets, which are dedicated to ensuring the most yield and convenience for users. PLV GLP, being their only PLV asset life currently, is one of the most popular products on their platform. By depositing GLP on the platform, users will receive back PLV GLP, which farms yield natively from GMX as well as the native Plutus token. Users will not have to pay any fees to change their GLP into PLV GLP, but they will need to pay a 2% fee when exiting the vault and a 10% fee from ETH yield being accrued. Do not worry, however, about massive fees on your position, as this fee is exclusively on yield being farmed. If a user is making 20% APR by staking into these vaults, the Plutus Treasury will receive 2% of that APR. From the 2% exit fee, 0.5 is distributed among PLV GLP stakers, while the rest goes back into the Plutus Treasury. For the 10% vault fee, all of that money will go back into the Treasury. Let's also cover the native Plutus token known simply as Plutus DAO or PLS on coin tracking websites. This token actually recently got new tokenomics, making it even more lucrative to use on the platform. The old version of the PLS token worked simply as a token you would lock up to farm yield on the platform. The token would farm yield from the treasury and give users governance power via PLS DPX and PLS Jones rewards. Users had a choice of a one month, three month or six month locking phase to choose from and would earn rewards based on the amount of time locked. The new version of the PLS token will still be fundamentally built on people locking their tokens on the protocol, but will have added features for users to enjoy. The locked PLS token will be known as LPLS and users will be able to earn bribes, multiplier points, escrowed PLS and boosting powers across the Plutus DAO ecosystem with this token. The locking phase set for this new PLS token will be 16 weeks and users will be able to add to their locked up positions during the lockup period. Their first new feature is Plutus Multiplier Points or PMP. Users with this LPLS token will earn multiplier points at a rate of 50% APR. These multiplier points serve as additional LPLS tokens so the mechanism incentivizes people to keep their money locked. Users locking up their tokens will also receive escrowed PLS or ESPLS over a one year period, which will also act like additional LPLS. In order for ESPLS to be vested, users must continue relocking their LPLS tokens. ESPLS is built to ensure users receive a target APR for locking up tokens. The final element to discuss is the boosted rewards possible through LPLS. 
The boost mechanism is similar to the curve model, where users' positions will have rewards boosted relative to their TVL in a vault with a max boost multiplier of 2.5. In practice, this means that if a user owns 50% of the TVL in a vault, a user must own 50% of all LPLS to have the max boost, making this an even playing ground for whales and smaller accounts. The last part I will mention in this video is their productive treasury. The productive treasury is primarily composed of Dopex and Jones assets and is the mechanism behind the yield for many of the products on the Plutus style platform. The yield distribution of the treasury has 50% of the yield being compounded in the treasury, 25% distributed among lockers of the PLS token, 15% distributed to PLS DPX stakers, and 10% distributed among PLS Jones stakers. The goal of the treasury is to provide deeper liquidity to assets like Dopex and Jones, while having a consistent pool from which users can farm yield. Overall, the Plutus DAO protocol seems to be a leading force in yield and governance aggregation on the Arbitrum network. It remains to be seen if they will fulfill their goal of becoming a layer 2 governance black hole on Arbitrum, but as of now they are positioned well in pursuit of this goal. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe for more content covering the Arbitrum ecosystem. As always, thanks for watching and stay safe out there Anons.